CIOs often struggle, and the struggle is the managing director comes out and says, look, I, could, I couldn't care less if it's called digital or if it's called blockchain or IoT, and all I care about is outcomes. And then, of course, they turn to uh, vendor friends like yourself and say, hey, let's talk outcomes. Now, tell me, how is that changing your world? Because you know, yesterday at the panel, we also spoke about how IT outcomes don't matter so much and business outcomes do. How is that impacting your world? That's a great question. It's actually one of the biggest things, as to mention data, and I'm sure many of you are in your own businesses. We're struggling with through that transformation. Mm. Our, our DNA as a company is absolutely deep technology skills. Uh, it's, it's, you know, it's, the history has been around networking, data centers, security, end user computing, uh, etc. And now what we're doing is we're, we're having to shift our skill and capability to talk, have more of a business-led discussion. So we talk very much around our strategy, we've got a 2020 strategy, and it's very much premised on delivering outcomes for our clients. So that means we've got to change the skill set. Mm. We're introducing a consulting organisation really? okay. at, uh, at Dimension Data. We're employing people that come from different backgrounds. My background isn't infrastructure, it, it's, uh, I'm from SAP, so it's bringing in different types of skills, mm. but also making sure we've got the, the people within the organisation who can bridge that you know, that bring the technology to bear as well. So, so it's, a, it's a skill transformation process we're going through at all levels of the organisation. Interesting. And, and, you know, yesterday, and I'm going to connect this with something we spoke yesterday, which was uh, the more you go digital, your nature of risks change over time. Uh, you're bringing in brand new risks that you've never heard about. Now, when organisations and clients of yours actually bring in new risks, you also bring in new risks, right? So at some stage, um, how is your engagement levels in terms of participation in these deals with these clients changing? And are you sort of onboarding some of that risk at your own end as well? You know, I think we are. I think there is a, a greater willingness for organisations like ours to, to share some of that risk. Right. Particularly as you go into, you know, these agile types of deployments, you mm. know, the world of DevOps, Lean, etc. Mm. You know, we're very much adopting Agile uh, at Dimension Data. And what that means is, is it, it's a different type of engagement with many of our clients. And it's not for everybody. Mm. You know, many of our clients want a traditional, we just want the price up front, we want to know what the outcome is going to be. Um, but Agile is something that is driving a different type of conversation and it very much is premised on Shares. Okay, so let me pose a CIO client and ask you, you made a comment and a very interesting one and you said digitization projects and in the same breath you also said digital transformation. What's the difference if I was a client asking the same question? I think digital transformation is a, these words tend to get over. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> That's nice. yeah. I think digital transformation is really about um, 
the changes that need to occur in an organisation, mm. some of them are technology, some of them are skill-based, mm. um, to achieve a business outcome. I think the key thing, that I, and I even have to remind myself of this all of the time, and I'm, I talk to clients about this every day, is we've just got to focus on a business outcome. It's actually not about a technical outcome. Technology is the enabler. It's mm. absolutely got to be premised on a business, business outcome. Okay, talking about a great demise from my next question. Uh, See, so going to our latest research that we did, 50% of the IT budget is going to sit with non-CIO roles very soon. And a lot of that is going to be driven by the CEO himself because you know he's been asked brand new questions from the board that he's never been tasked to. Now, when you do meet a new CEO, uh, and of course you go by the way of a CIO, how do you prep up the CIO to have a conversation with their CEO? Because ultimately, you are the agents to that education for change internally. So it gives a sense of how do you sort of prepare these CIOs in the, in the room to go and talk to their CEOs further and make a case for digital? It's a, it's a great question. It's actually one that we had to tackle with ourselves. Right. So when I joined Dimension Data two years ago, I had a look at our IT budget. Mm. And I was like, wow, we're really lean on IT. This is, we obviously have a great operation. Until I discovered the budget, most of the money was actually being spent in every other department. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, wow. So we're, we're clearly have got some challenges here. Mm. But actually, I think the key is a CIO. And when I had the discussion with with my CIO, was really talking about the need for the IT organisation to provide some boundaries and a framework and an architecture. I don't think we want to restrict finance and marketing from exploring with some of these technologies. I don't think that, I think that force is, is bolted. What I think we can do though is put in place, particularly when it comes to the digital underlying infrastructure, the security uh, requirements, um, the need for us to, to to be part of these projects, I think that's absolutely a correct, a correct approach. And really, looking at it from a risk and a compliance perspective, I think is absolutely the role of the CIO. Interesting. Um, you know, uh, when, when so much is going on, there's risk, there's compliance, there's new technologies, there's brand new competition and all of that. Now, how do you start preparing for this change? Um, do you sort of first say, let me go out and get new skills? Or do you first make a business case? Because, or do you say, guess what, I am doing a data center transformation. Let me first think about digital infrastructure. Let me enable the, the base of it. And then I'll go and do all the fancy things that I'd like. Now, how do you prepare the organization? I think, I think it's like any transformation. I think it needs to come from a very strong message from the top. Right. So it's sort of got to be board, board sort of C-level messaging around you know, the, the vision that we have, the, stra the, stra the vision, the strategy, and, and, and some of the changes that we Make. And, then it, and then it's really looking at the business outcome, it's identifying the sorts of skills and capability and of course I work for a professional services organisation and we, many of our clients are in this room and some, some organisations that aren't our clients but mm. we also, I also believe that many organisations are identifying that they don't have the skills and they are looking to reach out to work with organisations that can support them. And certainly I think there is a, you know, there is a lot, a, a role that we can play in the services industry to support mm. uh, organisations. But I think organisations have to look at their own skill set. One area, if I could just take a moment, mm. is cyber security. What we're seeing at the moment is many companies are looking at the implementation of, you know, their, their own s uh, security operations and SOCs. One of the biggest challenges, though, that we're seeing is there's such a shortage of cyber security skills in the market. Massive shortage. So I think we're, we're seeing that organisations are willing to look at services organisations like Dimension Data mm -hmm. to support um, their deployments of their own SOCs. We've got managed service capability and security where we can back out some of the, some of the additional workload, uh, etc. So I think, I think there is a realisation in the industry that not everything can be done by every company, mm -hmm. that there is a need for organisations like us and others uh, to play in that space. And is that where the one NTT message come out very strongly? Yeah, absolutely. I think if you look at, you know, the statistics were shared by Kieran and the team yesterday. Um, I, you know, I was with SAP for many years. I love SAP. To this day, I'm still. I'm fan. sure they do too. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, <laughs> you know, NTT, it's it's uh, almost three hundred thousand employees. Right. And then if you look at just the breadth of the capability that we have with NTT Com, Dimension Data, and NTT Data. 
plus all of the other organisations as well, like NetMagic here. So we've got, I think we've got some, some just some unbelievable expertise that we can bring to the market. And I can tell you, NTT Group, NTT as an organisation sees India mm -hmm. as, as the driver of growth, not just in this part of the world, but in the world at the moment. So there's a lot of exciting things that we're going to be doing here in India uh, in the not too distant future. Well, speaking of India, and a lot of these CIOs who we engage with on a daily basis have one consistent feedback. Uh, and we heard this yesterday as well, that people come in and organizations come in from across the globe, you know, say control V, control C, you know, copy paste their models. And we're not that model, really. Uh, our skills are different. Uh, so talk, talk to us about how Dimension Data is approaching the Indian market and the Indian organizations differently, because the kind of scale and size and complexity, of, for example, what SBI deals with, there is absolutely no parallels across the world. Yeah. So, so it, exactly right. And uh, SBI is a great example, but there are many others as well here. That, so that you've got geographical, I'm telling you something you already know, but you know, you've got <laughs> geographical scale, which is something I can relate to, but the population scale, I still struggle. It's just, you know, so, uh, but it's also what we're seeing at the moment is India leading in so many areas. You know, so some of the projects that we're involved in here are absolutely leading edge. So the sort of the, the investments that we're making um, aren't just about creating sort of centres of excellence in mm -hmm. India mm -hmm. to be used outside of India. I think a lot of organisations have been doing that. Let's look at India as a lower cost, high skill market to support growth in other markets. We're actually looking at investing in skills and capability in India, quite frankly, for India. India is one of my most, it's the largest market for us in, in our region. Okay, so, so the investment that we're making here, and I've also got to say China, <laughs> um, but uh, India is enormously important. Wonderful. And I have the, the, the toughest question for the night for you for the morning, actually. Oh, no. Yeah. You Don't spoke about the automated reception. Good. Okay. You. So if I come in, will it recognize me at all? Um, <laughs> next time you come, it should be able to recognize it. <laughs> sure, Sometimes it doesn't always get it 100% correct, but we're getting there. Wonderful. Thank you so much for your time, John. It's been a pleasure chatting. Thanks, Thanks very much. Thank you very, very much. Thank you.